Summary of Henry V by William Shakespeare At the beginning of the play, the chorus apologizes for how the theater only shows a small part of history. Act I starts with the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Bishop of Ely trying to keep Henry V from passing a bill that would take church property by giving Henry the church's blessing and money to raise an army to take France for England. Canterbury tells Henry that war is right because Salic law, which says that property can only be passed down through male heirs, does not apply in France. Because of this, Henry has an inherited right to French land. The French ambassadors bring the box of tennis balls and the warning from the Dauphin. Henry shows how he feels and announces war. Bardolph, NYM, and Pistol are also fighting, while Hostess Quickly and Boy are at Falstaff's bedside. France pays the English Lord Scroop, Cambridge, and Grey to come up with a plan to kill Henry, but Henry finds out about the plan in time. He plays with the rebels by letting them say that the king should be cruel to a commoner, and then he finds out what they were up to and puts them to death according to their own policy. Henry goes to France by boat. Henry V gives King Charles, the Dauphin, and the French court a choice, give up or be attacked. He laughs at them. The chorus says that Charles gives Henry small dukedoms and his daughter Catherine. Henry isn't happy, so he attacks Harfla. To get his men excited, he talks about their power and nobility. NYM, Bardolph, and Pistol try to avoid fighting while Fluellen gives a talk about Roman military rules. Harfla gives up after Henry threatens him with terrible violence. Henry then tells his men to be kind to the French people. Catherine works on her English at the French court, while the French get ready to gather their army. Back at the English camp, Henry agrees to put Bardolph to death for stealing. He doesn't seem to have even thought about or noticed that Bardolph was one of Falstaff's friends when Falstaff was Henry's guide. By doing this, Henry is trying to teach his troops to be good people. Montjoy, a French diplomat, comes to ask Henry for a ransom to pay back the damage he has done to France or face total loss. Henry refuses to back down and says he will fight the next day even though his troops are tired. The two forces wait for the fight to start the next morning. The French are proud and sure of themselves, while the English are tired, sick, and afraid. Henry goes around the English camp dressed as a common soldier and argues with Michael Williams about whether the war is fair and whether the king has the right to start it. He gives gloves to Williams and promises to fight him when they meet. Alone, Henry talks about the stresses of being king and wishes he had the peace of mind of a commoner. The next morning, the French charge into battle with confidence while the English, who are outnumbered, wait for reinforcements. Henry then gives a speech about the pride and unity of the English. He says that this day, St. Crispin's Day, will always be honored as a way to honor the bravery of his men. His men charge out with a lot of energy and beat the French. A group of French rebels destroy the English camp and kill Boy and other people. Montjoy shows up and asks the French if they can tell the noblemen's bodies from the commoners. He also says that the English have won. The battle is called the Battle of Agincourt by Henry. He gives Fluellen Williams's glove under fake pretenses. When Fluellen and Williams start fighting, he shows himself to be the person Williams had a fight with. Williams is forgiven by Henry, and he also gives him a gift. A messenger says that France has lost 10,000 people and England has lost 29,000 people. Before going back to England, Henry gives God the credit for the win and calls for a holy parade and Christian burials. The chorus talks about how humble Henry was in England and how he went back to France to make a peace deal when the Holy Roman Emperor asked him to. The last act starts in France, where Fluellen fights Pistol for making fun of the leek he wore in his hat to celebrate St. Davy's Day. Gower agrees with Fluellen and tells Pistol not to make fun of other countries. At the same time, Henry, King Charles, Queen Isabel, Catherine, and French and English nobles meet at the French castle. Henry agrees to peace, but only if Charles agrees to what he wants. Charles goes away to think about this. Henry woos Catherine by pretending to be a simple soldier. He wants to marry Catherine more than anything else. Charles comes back to tell Henry that he has given him everything he asked for. 
he also welcomes Henry and Catherine's engagement, hoping that their marriage will keep England and France from fighting in the future. At the end of the play, the chorus talks about how Henry's son's descendants lost France. About the author. In 1564, William Shakespeare was born. His father was a glovemaker and assemblyman in Stratford-upon-Avon, and his mother was the daughter of a wealthy farmer. At age 18, Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway, who was eight years older than him. Between the mid-1580s and 1613, he wrote many plays, including Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer Night's Dream, Hamlet, The Henriad, Julius Caesar, Othello, and many others. In 1609, he put out a book of sonnets. In the mid-1590s, when London's stages were closed because of the plague, he put out other long works. Shakespeare was said to have died of a fever in 1616, just a month after writing a will in which he said he was healthy. His writings that are still around include almost 40 plays and more than 150 sonnets. His work is still performed, studied, and revised today. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.